Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to put the offer out there. If anyone wants to buy us for $3.6 billion, we will take the call. Sony, if you're listening, calendar's, calendar's wide open. Call any time, really, or text. I could take text it. What? Wait, hold on. I gotta... No, no, it's my mom. Is she doing good? Yeah, she's good. She's good. She's in a line dancing group now, which is kind of cute. That's really nice. You Tell her I said hi, Lawrence. She's very nice. I will. I'll pass it on. Like Lawrence's mom, everyone at Bungie must be scooting their feet these days. They just announced an acquisition deal from Sony for $3.6 billion. Another acquisition. Wow, this is the third massive acquisition in the games industry this year already. And we only just got out of January. This comes after Take-Two announced their acquisition of Zynga for $12.7 billion. And Microsoft announced their acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Acquisition Blizzard more like it for $68.7 billion. From the sounds of it though, this acquisition will do less to shake up the games industry terrain as both Bungie and Sony are explicit in saying that Bungie will remain independent and that its games will remain multi-platform. It's nice to get a really straight answer on that. This is according to an FAQ posted on Bungie's website about the acquisition. The developer and publisher's quote, commitment to cross-platform play and social features remains unchanged. Yeah, PlayStation CEO and President Jim Ryan is equally direct in an interview with gamesindustry.biz uh, saying that quote, that approach will apply to future Bungie releases. That is unequivocal. That's fantastic news, Stadia users. Both of you will get to keep playing Destiny on your preferred platform. Might as well pop the champagne at Stadia HQ. Is there an HQ for Stadia? I don't think there is, because they're not likely to get too many more wins in the coming months. Probably stick to the cheap champagne though, because I, we're not sure how long Stadia is gonna be around. So beyond platform exclusivity, this deal obviously brings up a lot of questions, ton really. Why did Sony buy Bungie if they don't wanna make Destiny platform exclusive? And for Bungie's sake, what did they get out of this deal and how will it change their games in the future? Luckily, statements from both Bungie and Sony offer a lot of really direct commentary on both of these questions, so let's dive into the news. The press release offers some initial insight into this acquisition, stating that the deal will, quote, give SIE access to Bungie's world-class approach to live game services and technology expertise, furthering SIE's vision to reach billions of players. Well, organizationally, uh, Bungie will remain an independent business unit, meaning it won't be integrated into the PlayStation Studios family, but rather collaborate with them on their projects. Sony Group Corporation Chairman, President, and CEO Kenichiro Yoshida also indicates that the collaboration will extend beyond the PlayStation brand itself, saying that, quote, we will utilize the Sony Group's diverse array of entertainment and technology assets to support further evolution of Bungie and its ability to create iconic worlds across multiple platforms and media. Executives from both Sony and Bungie also posted statements on the acquisition that further define the nature of this acquisition and provide more insight as to what Sony and Bungie get out of this acquisition deal. PlayStation CEO and President Jim Ryan specifically mentions Bungie's expertise at, quote, bringing immersive experiences at great scale to the community through games that evolve and develop over time and has a hugely impressive roadmap for future content. Ryan gets more specific in saying that Bungie's multi-platform publishing experience will, quote, take PlayStation beyond the console and increase our potential audience. And that Bungie's expertise will, quote, support the development of several future live services titles from PlayStation Studios. Ooh, that's kind of an eyebrow raiser. I think so. Statements about going beyond the console, uh, that makes us immediately think about Sony's recent push into PC and how Bungie's cross-platform experience might enable more collaboration between the PC and PlayStation platforms. We'll go into that in a lot more detail in a minute though. We got a little more news to get through first. Statements from uh, Bungie CEO Pete Parsons are a little less specific, but far more grandiose somehow. Uh, in saying, quote, today, Bungie begins our journey to become a global multimedia entertainment company. Parsons doesn't expand too much on what that might mean, but says the company will begin hiring like crazy to, quote, support our ambitious vision. If we take all this together, if we combine statements from Sony Group Chairman Yoshida, PlayStation CEO Ryan, and Bungie CEO Parsons, it sounds like the Bungie acquisition has two main objectives here. First, it's to integrate Bungie's cross-platform technology and live game expertise into PlayStation Studios games. And second, to enable Bungie to develop media projects based off of their IP. So that first bit, the live service cross-platform bit is super exciting, really, and should result in better and more accessible experiences for players. Uh, Bungie's really come a long way in developing Destiny into, into a true cross-platform, cross-play experience. It's one of the best, in my opinion. Yeah, they, they put in all the legwork, and so they have the tech, and... It's for sale, I guess. Sony, on the other hand, hasn't quite come as far when it comes to cross-platform stuff. Uh, they lagged behind other platforms when it came to enabling cross-play on specific titles like Fortnite and Rocket League. 
They've also struggled with cross-generation game purchases and save file compatibility, at least in comparison to how Xbox handled their recent generational turnover. And while PlayStation Studios games are just starting to release on PC, None of them feature cross-play or cross-save features with PlayStation platforms as they are now. Granted, none of the games released on PC so far from Sony, like Days Gone, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, have any really multiplayer features at all. Uh, that notwithstanding, it's unlikely that Sony would develop a full suite of cross-platform tools before they even need them. And PlayStation President Jim Ryan has frequently commented about his desire to expand the reach of their games to new platforms. Ryan reiterated his platform expansion ambitions in an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, saying, quote, We are starting to go multi-platform. We have an aggressive roadmap with live services and the opportunity to work with and particularly learn from the brilliant and talented people from Bungie that is going to considerably accelerate the journey we find ourselves on. There's a bunch of poets writing these statements. <laughs> Sony speaks very poetically about games and their experiences. It's kind of nice, but it's it's a little artistic sometimes. In that context that uh, Jim Ryan was talking about, it sounds like Bungie's cross-platform expertise slots into their business plans like the perfect puzzle piece. Uh, PlayStation wants to expand their reach and Bungie's operating a live service game on multiple platforms, practically speaking. It means Bungie's cross-platform systems may connect PlayStation Studios games on PlayStation, PC, streaming, and then who knows what other things they're, other platforms they're going for. That's cool. That's goddamn cool. Especially if you want to play all of these PlayStation Studios games and you still can't find a PlayStation 5. It is worth noting though, this isn't going to happen overnight. Uh, technological integration takes a while, especially when these teams are just starting to get to know each other and talk and stuff like that. But it absolutely paints a very bright future for PlayStation Studios games a couple of years from now. As for the second part of the deal, uh, both PlayStation Group Chairman Kenichiro Yoshida and Bungie CEO Pete Parsons mentioned expanding Bungie's work beyond game development. What the hell does that mean? Does that mean a Destiny live action or animated series? I mean, like, what are they doing over there? Who knows? I, I mean, it might, it could. I kind of forgot about this, but this isn't the first time that Bungie's talked about expanding into other media types. Back in February, 2021, Bungie announced personnel restructuring to quote, prepare for the expansion of the Destiny universe into additional media. PC Gamer's Tim Clark also pointed out a September, 2021 job listing for a senior executive role that would focus on developing Destiny quote, into new categories, including TV, films, books, comics, audio formats, all of it. It's not just Destiny either, even though that's the one big property under Bungie's belt right now. In that same interview with GamesIndustry.biz, Parsons reminds you that, quote, we're working on more than Destiny, uh, and they would and they would like to, quote, explore these worlds even more. And it's important to remember that, unlike Microsoft, Sony owns a full movie production studio, so the corporate synergy is easy to imagine at a glance. And they produce amazing films like Venom, Venom 2, Morbius, and then other movies we don't care about. <laughs> Are you telling me Kratos and Venom could team up? Please don't do that. What if the symbiote got on Kratos? What about that? No, I don't want ever want that. While Sony has not historically pursued adapting their game properties into series and film, outside of 2016's Ratchet & Clank, and also, don't forget about uh, The Last of Us, that's coming out for HBO because they've got Uncharted, which is coming out for movies, Last of Us is coming out on HBO, and apparently a film treatment of Ghost of Tsushima and a Twisted Metal series in current development. Twisted Metal? That actually might make a pretty good TV series. Some of the backstories in Twisted Metal are dumb. Like it's pro wrestling territory, some of those stories. In this case though, the stated intention, which is we're gonna make media, definitely matches the contextual moves we've seen from Sony at large, which is that they're starting to convert more of their game properties into series and movies. So. Now we just have to sit back and wonder what a directed narrative in the Destiny universe would even look like. That game hasn't told a fully formed story in any capacity yet, so I don't know. Maybe it's just two hours of somebody reading the backs of cards to you. I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. Well, we'll sum all of this up. It sounds like we're going to get media projects based on Destiny and other unannounced Bungie properties. Plus, cross-platform and live service features integrated into PlayStation Studios games. Uh, all while Bungie theoretically maintains uh, its independent publishing status and keeps supporting its games on multiple platforms. I, I gotta admit, it doesn't, it sounds like it doesn't really get better than that. Um, theoretically. All the terms right now sound great. Yeah, that's all, that's all in theory, Lawrence, and in, uh, in practical, <laughs> in practicality, uh, that stuff doesn't always work out like that. We've been there on that side of it, Lawrence. We know how that goes. Who knows what's going to happen if, if Bungie's first media project isn't a smash hit. Yeah, they, they probably will hit the relegation status pretty quick. Let's just, for now, sit back and marvel at how poetic 
this acquisition is. Yeah, this story is is crazy. Uh, so for starters, Bungie used to be owned by Sony's biggest competitor in the console space. Microsoft acquired them back in 2000. Um, more than that, Bungie put Xbox on the map entirely uh, in the first place with their 2001 launch title, Halo Combat Evolved. They also helped pioneer Xbox's subscription online service with 2004's Halo 2, and that was important because that was the first console subscription service out there, and now everyone uses it. So Bungie was pretty instrumental in that beat in the games industry that's now widespread. That's right, but Lawrence, the narrative gets even more wild. Bungie, Bungie, remember, I'm sure we all remember this, they split from Microsoft in 2007 to go independent. Uh, later, signing a 10-year publishing deal with Activision in 2010. Yeah, and that seemed to go okay, sort of. They mostly wrote it out. They That deal stretched into 2019. Bungie exited that deal and moved into self-publishing, which got them off the Battle.net launcher, praise God. Uh, now, Microsoft is in the process of acquiring Activision Blizzard. Uh, and <laughs> that was Bungie's last business partner, while Bungie themselves have been acquired by Microsoft's direct competitor. So much money being thrown around all over those crazy moon wizards, Peter Dinklage, you know what I'm saying? That wizard came from the moon. I have to admit, in context, uh, if, if we did make this a pro wrestling narrative, it's very easy to see like a spiteful narrative behind this, you know? Microsoft, oh, they're just so jilted that they lost their sweet baby boy Bungie. So they chased after their publisher and bought that. Uh, meanwhile, Sony's just seething that Microsoft is making these big money moves and they scoop up Bungie as a symbolic victory. The timeline of these acquisitions doesn't really support the notion that these deals are the result of corporate pettiness or console clout chasing. Uh, Sony's Jim Ryan specifically said as much in this interview with Games Industry, reminding everyone that, quote, these conversations have been a number of months in gestation and certainly predate the activity that we have seen this year. Hey, but if you like corporate drama, don't worry. Because it sounds like the money fights are far from over. I know, I saw this tweet. Games Award producer Jeff Keighley said, quote, there are a few other big video game deals in final stages of negotiations, and that, quote, it's going to be an interesting year. I mean, that's good news for us, the dorks that love researching games industry news and talking about it on YouTube. That's that's all fun. And it's it's fun for the, the, the console warriors too. You get in the trenches. It's Every acquisition gives you a new clip of ammo that you just fire across the forum lines. But I don't know, like beyond that. The question is, is it good for you? Just the one dude who's sitting in his house wants to play Destiny. Is that good for you? Time will tell, but if we get to play Ghost of Tsushima on PC, where it should have been initially, originally, it can't be all bad, right? I mean, in this case, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of negativity around it. It really does seem like it's two companies that have goals and those goals overlap in a really nice way. Bungie wants to make movies and they have cross-platform tech. Sony can make movies and they want cross-platform tech. Dink, it, like it's a nice fit. But yeah, as, as far as the greater industry is concerned and the consolidation of, of giant game uh, developers under giant game publishers. It's a bit scary. It's a bit scary when you start to think about uh, true competition fading away. That means even more homogenization and product. It means less risk taking, less experimentation. That said though, there are still a ton of uh, independent publishers and developers out there. Um, just to list a few of my favorite. I like Devolver Digital's work quite a bit. Annapurna Interactive puts out a lot of good stuff. So if you're concerned about consolidation, then as usual, we'll bang that drum again. Find the independent developers and publishers and support them with your money. Play No Man's Sky. <laughs> Hello Games, independent pu independent developer, yeah. Also, you know, Lawrence, I can't wait to uh, watch Destiny Season 3 starring Sean Bean, where he gets beheaded. If he's a guardian, he'll just come back. Unless somebody shoots his ghost, which I guess you can do. It'll be really interesting if they either make it like a much more defined narrative or it stays as fuzzy and weird as Destiny always has been and they just make that a series and let, just let it go buck wild. I can't wait. Just like a bunch of 30 second scenes with dialogue that means nothing. Uh, crammed back to back with no context at all. Do it. Just be crazy and do it. I can't wait to see a bunch of fucking muscular dudes with rifles shooting at a big giant orb. Yeah, <laughs> for like... For 45 minutes straight. For 45 minutes, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And one of them dies, they wipe, and the episode's over.